Uh, hey everybody, Saturday is going to be a very big day. So we're gonna start, as you know, the first Zoom meeting will be from eight to 10. That's for candidates doing component one. And then we'll break for half an hour. So please, please, please let your candidates go at 10. Some of them will have to get back on for the component two meeting and they'll, they'll need that that brain break and the body break and time to go to the bathroom and clear their head, maybe grab a snack. So, you know, you're going to have to keep yourselves disciplined and focused to finish by 10 o'clock. Um, so I will share a couple of things with you. First of all, you should have all gotten an invitation to um, the Google Drive that has all the PLF files in it. Here it is. Um, I have all the candidate meeting agendas in this folder. Um, down here, some random things I'm uploading um, here. So just ignore, just ignore these for now. But in the folders, the candidate meeting agendas, the PLF meeting agenda. So like when I have a, a meeting just with you, all those agendas will be in this folder. And then the Zoom meetings that, that we use, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the slide presentations that we use in the Zoom meetings are here. Um, so be sure that you, you know, that you got that invitation from me. Um, keep that, you know, you're gonna have to visit it often throughout the year. Uh, another thing I'm gonna share is um, the presentation for component one. I'm gonna send a, a, another video um, to walk you through the component two meeting. I don't have all that quite ready yet. Um, Google Drive was down all morning, so I lost a good four hours of of work. I mean, I worked, I did other work, but I had planned to finish both of these meetings and get them out to you so that you could be studying and looking them over. I'm just going to go very quickly through this. It's not anything new to most of you. It'll be a refresher if you're brand new to this. Take good notes while you watch the video. Always, of course, always watch a video with pen and pencil in hand, just like we expect our candidates to do uh, pen and pencil, pencil and paper. You can tell I'm, I've worked too hard today. So, um, you know, your candidate will start all together. Like always, they'll rename themselves. We'll put them in breakouts. Um, and then you'll have them sign in. I have those um, Google Docs for you. Um, so your candidates will sign in and then there's the question place at the bottom and then you'll start going through uh, these slides. Um, sign in, go through the slides and then the question part. Uh, so just go through the weight of it. Make sure they know that the multiple choice is 20% and the um, constructed responses are 20, but overall it's 40%. That's huge. That's huge. So they need to start studying right away. That's why we don't wait until April anymore to do um, um, component one sessions is because that doesn't give people long enough to study. Component one is significantly harder than it used to be and it's worth a lot more. So it's worth 40%, almost half of the whole thing. Be sure to impress that upon them. Um, and then the big picture um, you can, you know, go over all this. This is about their content knowledge, not what they're doing necessarily in their classroom. That's how it's different from the portfolio, 40%. There's multiple choice and three open-ended. Um, make sure they know that they'll schedule um, at a Pearson testing site. Y'all know how to go over all of this, but really go over all of this quickly. It's not like this is the only component one meeting we'll be having. We'll be having more throughout the year. So this is just the big picture overview. This slide is not the time to get bogged down in the details. So keep yourself focused, keep yourself <laughs> focused on the big picture of this session. So this slide is just the overview. 
So they'll book at a Pearson testing center. It'll last about three hours. Make sure they know that it's the whole age range. And if they are doing something that has multiple subjects, like a generalist, it'll be all of those subjects. So y'all kind of know what to say here on this slide, but make sure you're just kind of doing it, you know, not too fast, of course, but you're not getting bogged down here on this slide. Um, and then tell them you're gonna cover these things in the session. How do I schedule? How do I prepare? And what resources are available to me? Again, we're not getting down into the close, close, close details. Um, it's just three things. How do you schedule? How do you prepare? What resources? Now this, be sure your name matches. And then remember, I always tell them kind of schedule in the middle. Don't go too early and don't go too late, but they need to call very early and have their um, preferred dates already set because a lot of people will be calling on that first day and some of their dates will already be taken. So they need to have at least three dates. I always um, recommend that. I'm pretty sure I did a video just like this um, in Canvas. Um, that they're supposed to watch before they come, but it, it, that's another reason. Some of this will just be review, but in any case, it's a big picture overview. But I do want you to tell them here in this gray box, these things have to match. So whatever name they used when they registered with the national board, that should be the same name they used to register with me for World Class. If it's not, and I already know for a fact that some of the names they used to register are not like names. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, like it's not like a full name and you can tell. Um, and so tell them that they need to contact me and make sure that I know what name they registered with the national board or they can tell you if they registered with a different name uh, with us than they did with national board, they need to tell you, let's, let's keep it that way they tell you, and then you let me know if you have any name changes to make. When I turn their name in to the MDE to get, um, so that we can get paid for serving them, if it's not a name that's on the national board list, we don't get paid for serving them. Names have to match. It always, well, I'm not gonna start griping, but I can never understand why people would register under a name that's not their legal name but they do. I mean, it's just weird. And then they register differently, you know, different names, different places. Name on their driver's license has to match. So like if they're, you know, most of y'all are in the room when I talk to them about this every year, maybe they um, got married, maybe they got divorced, maybe they, you know, whatever. But before they go to assessment center, whatever name they registered with national board has to match the name on their driver's license. Just be sure they know that. They can change one or the other, it's up to them what they change, but they have to match or they won't let them in to take their test. Um, so now just start answering the questions. Tell them that, you know, this really is something in the future. They're not even going to get an email from the national board until probably February, maybe even early March. Um, and then the testing window will be March through June again. We don't recommend they go like the last week of the testing window. We don't recommend they go in March either um, because a lot of times people just want to get it out of the way, but they need to be sure they're fully prepared for it, you know, before they go. Um, and then once they get that email that, that says that, that they can start scheduling, they can either call to schedule or they can go to this website and schedule. Again, they need to have a couple of um, alternate dates. When they, if they call and they're told, you know, if they, and they give the date they want to come, if they're told, oh, that date's full, you can't come that day, they need to already have a couple more lined up that they can, um, they can schedule. And then how to prepare. They need to review the assessment center policies and guidelines. You're not going to do that Saturday. That's something they need to do on their own. They need to study the standards, tell them there's a table that has standards. You're gonna actually open that for them in a minute. 
review the exercise descriptions, there's rubrics, um, the certificate area national board standards, that is a duplicate of something I already have up here. And then there's tools on the Pearson website. They can take a tutorial. Um, this is just to tell them how they can prepare. And now we're gonna start looking at this more closely. You know, a lot of people think, oh, you can't prepare for it. So here's where you tell them, yes, you can. And yes, you must absolutely start preparing for it right now. If you wanna do well. Um, so policies and procedures. Here's those assessment center policies and guidelines that I, that I talked about. Tell them that they need to read that full document, but for now, you, you are going to make, make a note. I know you're writing, so make a note. When you get to this slide, you need to have the, that document pulled up and you just kind of share your screen and show that table of contents to show them how much information is in that document that they're responsible for knowing. So tell them that's their go-to document. They need to read it, know it, so that they don't mess up when they um, prepare or are actually at the assessment center. So pull up that document and look at the table of contents, but tell them they need to read it. Um, Now, uh, then this is when your meeting like really starts. So that's why you don't want to spend too much time on that other stuff because that's all stuff they can go back and look at. It's real, you know, detailed housekeeping type stuff. This is the meat of the meeting is how you study. So how do you study for the SRIs, the selected response, which, you know, people call it multiple choice. So go over again that it's the entire age range, not just like if they teach uh, fifth grade, it's not just 10 year olds, you know. Um, again, you're gonna pull up that table and then you show them the percentage of questions from each standard. You know, in some certificate areas, assessment center questions are only gonna come from two standards. Um, so show them that and, and it'll tell them exactly which standards and how many questions from each standard. So have that pulled up and ready to show them. You know, I typically do this in the big meeting in Gonzales Auditorium, but you're gonna have to do it in your breakouts now. Um, and then tell them that they're gonna have to use those standards to create a study guide. And you kind of maybe wanna walk them through an example or two. You know, I usually do that with the health standards, but you do it with, you know, with their standards. Um, and then remind them if they wanna do well on the multiple choice, they're gonna to have to really be familiar with those standards um, and, and study them very, very closely. Um, and then just, um, this is where you look at it together, look at a couple of the samples, and then talk about how to turn those standards into a study guide. So you're gonna spend a little bit of time on this um, and, and talking about this. And remind them that the answer to the question is not in the standard. So it may say accomplished teachers um, know the, like the example that I give them about health, accomplished teachers know the latest nutritional guidelines. That's what the standard says. But that means they're gonna Google <laughs> latest nutritional guidelines and they're going to study those the food pyramid or whatever it is you know and they're going to really that so the standard itself just knowing the standard is not how you study you use the standard to create the study guide so you may want to pull up like a statement from their standards and show them how just knowing that won't help them answer any multiple choice questions they have to like that becomes something they have to study but y'all know this, but just make sure they understand this. And then their standards um, worksheets, so like their standards organizer that they're, they've done for homework, they need to keep that really handy while they organize their time and their materials. They're gonna use that as a guide to start finding resources. 
And then, so that this is the selected response, all those slides we just did. And now you're gonna move on to the exercises. So you're going to give them like we usually do, you're gonna like read through the descriptions, the sample prompts and the rubric. You're gonna do, you know, as many of those as you have time to do, okay? Um, Cause there's three of them and you need to like, you know, kind of at least hit the high points of each one if you can. And then, um, you know, just talk about now, you know, what are you planning to do? Now, how are you gonna study? How are you gonna study for the multiple choice? How are you gonna study for the open-ended? You can give them some tips and, and strategies, but start a conversation about this. You know what I typically like to do, and I'll just model it, is anytime that I'm wanting to talk, like to have a conversation, a whole group conversation, then I'm gonna stop my share so that we can all see one another's faces. Um, and then you pull, pull it back up when you're ready to move on. But as much face-to-face -face as possible, remember, so don't keep those, the shared screen up the entire time. Um, let me go back. And then um, resources. Then you're gonna have a conversation about resources. Textbooks, professional journals, recent publications, professional websites, standard, standard, standards. Um, have a, you know, a discussion about that. Remind them if they find a really good resource, post about it in the Canvas, upload it to the Google Drive um, for component one. Um, remind them to like, you know, they can have their, schedule their own small group Zooms. Uh, they need to form study groups. The, the purpose of, the, of Saturday's meeting is to give them a big, big overview and then a couple of, um, of um, zoom in on some SRIs and the constructed response, but just the, the main purpose is to let them know this is a big deal. It's 40%. Here's how you use your component one um, on the National Board website, the component one directions. Here's how you use that to begin studying. And then they're gonna have to actually do that, you know, begin, begin studying. Um, and then we have some study sites. These are all in the canvas. And then, and a lot of times, um, like Saturday, some people emailed me to ask if they could have the PowerPoint, the slideshow. It's linked in the, in their agenda, right? <laughs> but, you know, I wish, I just can't be getting 200 emails about things like this. So, you know, remind them that not only is all this in the canvas, but it, you know, it's right here, <laughs> hello, which is again, linked in the agenda and their sign-in sheet in a million places, right? Um, and then there's homework. So I've gone back into canvas and I've created a page where they have to upload their constructed response graphic organizer. Um, and there's a video that kind of walks them through that and then a, an assignment where they upload it. So you can see before the meeting on October 17, who has uploaded that. Just like before this week's meeting, you'll be able to see who uploaded their standards organizer, which is gonna help them prepare for the selective response. And then this thing is going to help them prepare for the constructed response. And then also remind them to put resources in the component one Google Drive, which is linked right here. Okay. So they have everything they need right here. And so then, you know, people can go, y'all can everybody go back into your Google Doc and give them a few minutes to type questions and then you respond to those. Don't, don't send those questions to me. No, that's, that's your job. You answer their questions. Um, so, I mean, that's the reason they're typing them in the, in the document is you give them a little quiet time to type and then you answer. Um, unless it's a two to teach question, of course. If it's two to teach question, you tell them to call two to teach. So um, I think that's it 
for component one. Um, that slide presentation, the agendas, everything are, is in the, that PLF folder that in the drive. Um, I'm still working on component two. Maybe before I go to bed tonight, I can get that finished, make a video like this and send it to you. So you'll have time to kind of study over that too. But Saturday's a big day. So um, be ready, you know, study, have all your stuff pulled up for the share because that time of that two hours seems like a long time, but it may go really fast. I'm not as worried about the component one um, running out of time as I am component two actually, but breakouts are typically less than two hours, sometimes two hours, but a lot of times less. So I think, I think we may be okay, um, but it'll depend on your um, discipline and pacing of, of the meeting. So um, that's that for component one.